Hi there, my name is Kay Moon and I'm a twin flame channel and Western astrologer. And this is a video about the full moon in Virgo 2021, which took place on February 27th at 3.17 a.m. If you happen to be on the Eastern seaboard of the United States, if you're not, please check a time zone converter for your local time. This video is the video update specifically for the Twin Soul Collective. As ever and as always, please check out the general video <clears throat> so that you understand the context in which what you are about to hear is occurring, because context matters. It provides the anchor points for the interpretation that you're about to hear. Before we begin, I have a couple of announcements. The first is a huge, huge, huge thank you. I am so humbled and so grateful Having just hit the 15,000 subscriber milestone, I am just beyond blown away that there's that many of you that think what I have to say is of interest. Um, I'm also very humbled uh, and very much grateful for the ways that each of you have taken the opportunity to share a video with a friend or share a video on Instagram or Facebook or on your own YouTube channel. It means so much to me that you found enough guidance here that it, you know, it was it would warrant informing and sharing with other people. Most of the time I'm in my own little cave, you know, talking to my guides and feeling like, okay, this is nuts. Am I crazy? Only to, you know, see in the channel comments uh, or see in, you know, the shares for the video that actually what they were telling me was accurate um you know there's it just it never ceases to amaze me that they would use me in this way and that you would find yourself being served in this way so thank you for letting me be a conduit for the validation of your own intuition and thank you for letting it go when it, it the message isn't for you but for someone else thank you for taking the time to just tune into your own intuition and say, you know what, that one's not for me. K might have meant that for somebody else. I appreciate that grace with which all of you are choosing to move through life. To celebrate this milestone, I have decided to bring back Star School 101 um, because it was so much fun to share it with people. Um, and a lot of the Star School 101 students have shared that they've gotten tremendous, tremendous insight and value from Star School 101. So if you head on over to my website, you click on Star School, you'll see that Star School 101 has special pricing through March 19th. It'll be 11111. That is on purpose, 11111. Um, it's normally 14444, so it's over 20% off. And when you enroll, what you'll get are four pre recorded classes for listening and learning at your own place. You'll learn about the houses, signs, and planets. You'll learn the basics of how to read your chart so you can better understand either who you are or who your counterpart is. You'll learn about their houses, signs, and planets as well. You'll learn about the aspects and six axes of the zodiac wheel. And you'll learn how to interpret transit so that you know what's coming. This is really important because when I look at the astrology for what's coming and what's kind of going on right now, one of the things I'm always tracking is, okay, in terms of what's coming, where will my own divine masculine and my own divine feminine energy be inside of me? so that I can really show up in my connection in a way that honors my own energy and what I'm being asked to learn and doesn't pull or lean on my partner's energy and instead honors and respects what they are learning at this time as well. You'll also get four 90 minute to 120 minute pre-recorded office hours so office hours happened when Star School was live. You'll get access to those recordings. There will be no live Q&A for this run of Star School. That's why it's discounted so heavily. Um, 
but you will get access to all of the frequently asked questions from those office hours recordings that will help you illuminate and understand the material far more deeply, as well as one full color 26 page PDF workbook that you can download and complete one for yourself, one for your counterpart, and this will help you better understand how to be at peace in your union, how to be at peace with where your counterpart is and the choices they are making and what's going on in their world and the challenges that they're facing. Some of my students uh, reported you know, that just with the 101 class alone, uh, Meg had said that she knew how to interpret both of their charts, but this helped her feel a lot more compassion for her counterpart and for the ways in which the two of them are different. It gave her an opportunity to feel more compassionate for herself as well. Instead of feeling like she was doing it wrong, she saw how perfectly designed she was as a part of his lesson and how perfectly designed he is as a part of her work, her learning and growth on planet earth at this time. So um, it's a phenomenal program. You can get it, like I said, for a discounted price, but only through March 19th. After that, it goes back into the vault. And once it's back in the vault, um, it will not be available. It will be available in the future at the normal pricing. So I just thought I would share that with you by way of celebrating this 15,000 subscriber milestone. With all of that said, let's jump into this full moon in Virgo for twin souls. We'll start with the divine feminine's aspects. We have the divine feminine sitting here. I read her as Juno conjunct the south node. She is squaring Neptune, sextiling Jupiter, and trining Eris. These are important conversations. Divine feminine energy on planet Earth at this time is at a significant turning point, um, and this can play out so many ways. So I'm going to try <laughs> and really detail all of the different things that were shown to me as I looked at this full moon. But Listen for what's true for you. Don't try to make what's true for everyone apply and be exactly what it is for you because it doesn't work that way. You need to be listening for what is in the realm of your own intuition. So for some divine feminines, this is going to be the retrieval of something from a past life that either needs to be deployed or employed in this life, such as a gift um, or a mastery that you have from a past life or a lesson that did not get completed in a past life, but now the right people, the right circumstances, and the right information is available for you to complete it in this life, okay? For others, this is going to be a period of time where you do a level of past life work, and it just allows you to just be more at peace at what's in what's going on in your connection. It helps you find your way to a place of compassion, understanding, and re like acceptance about who your partner is and who you are at this particular moment in time. For other divine feminines, I have seen that this energy is preparing you for some level of um, you know, physiological transition. I've had some divine feminines tell me that during this period of time, you know, they are having some level of surgery on their lady parts um, for different reasons, you know, removing a cancer, um, you know, correcting a corrective type of surgery or, you know, a removing of a polyp or a cyst. All of that can be going on at this moment in time for some divine feminines, not for all. And then there's another energy here with the talking to the South Node, where some divine feminines are kind of getting this opportunity to step off of the, the kind of twin flame roller coaster for a little while and get like catch a breather, catch a break, get their life together. Because some of the energy intensity and pull of the connection is just, it's not as loud at this time, um, especially as she's preparing. She's going to get ready to go retrograde soon. 
and it'll really feel more quiet then and give you the opportunity to focus your immense gifts of energy and attention and spiritual bandwidth on amplifying service in your world and, you know, creating your life in a way that is more aligned with what you've learned from this love. Now, there's an entire other set of divine feminines who at this time, because of the way Jupiter and Juno have been traveling in sextile to one another, you guys and your divine counterparts have really been working in tandem around your communication and establishing connection and coming toward one another uh, in a way that's going to anchor some type of 3D romantic physical in the flesh relationship. If that's what's going on, you may find that at this time, uh, the divine feminine counterpart, the roles are swapping a little bit. Um, you may find that your divine masculine energy in you is rising quite a bit. Divine masculine, who's previously identified as divine masculine, you may see their divine feminine energy rising a little bit. This has been a period of time where there's been a lot of rebalancing in twin energies where, and my guides really explained it to me this way. Um, they had said, you know, as divine counterparts come into union with self, which is a necessary step in the journey. Some twins choose to do that inside of the romantic relationship. Some twins choose to do that outside of a romantic relationship and then get into one later. It, it just depends. But as that union with self energy starts to anchor, the identification with, oh, I'm divine feminine, they are divine masculine begins to dissolve even more. We all know that we all have both energies within us, but as union with self really begins to anchor, you start to see how, how precisely how much both you really are. And the volume gets turned up on the one that was previously the weak muscle, so to speak, so that it's in its strengthening it has the opportunity to counterbalance the strong muscle. So at this time, some of you who are in union and not in union, you may find yourselves creating greater union with self. And that is going to stabilize not just you, but all of the collective templates and all of the collective energies so that going forward, things can be a lot smoother between divine counterparts. Because remember, we've talked about this in other videos, we have a build coming. This is a steady build to January, 2023, when we have the divine counterparts speaking in harmony for the first time in conjunction since I think it was 2015. So, this energy between now and then is all about helping to create an anchor, way more individual stability, individual union within self, whether you are currently dancing with counterpart or dancing solo. You're always dancing with your counterpart when you're in a twin connection because the energy is always flowing back and forth between the two of you. Okay. So um, to get back to the nutshell of this, uh, union with self energy spiking, union with counterpart energy spiking at this time, because those two union energies are rising in the collective templates, there is a merging going on between masculine and feminine energies at this time for those who are willing to embrace that. Because these two are sextiling energies, We've talked about sextiling energies on the channel before, and I go in depth in the sex on sextiling energies in Star School 101. The sextile is an aspect of 60 degrees between two planets. This isn't the most harmonious, um, and it, it's actually kind of what I would call like the least harmonious, 
because in order to get any benefit out of it, you actually need to get off your duff, roll up your sleeves and do some work. So this would be, you know, applied healing, actively working on your healing with a coach, a mentor and a group program, a therapist, um, a healer. This would be some level of, you know, improving your communication patterns because we have divine masculine energy and a communication sign, um, you know, learning, you know, how to better communicate when you're hurt, what you need communicate out with the world. And this doesn't even have to be communicating with a counterpart. This could just be learning how to market yourself in union with self. So you can share your gifts with the world, asking your divine masculine energy to transport and provide your divine feminine gifts to the world. All of that is how this energy is working at this time. So, um, to get the benefit, because there's maximum benefit here, you can get a lot out of this period of time. You have to be willing to get out of the comfort zone, try a new thing, try on new behaviors, stop repeating past mistakes, face what's going on right now in your world, and take new steps in a new direction. For those of you who are in union, this a lot of this period of time December, January, February, now March is a period of time where you are really getting your bearings around, you know, what this particular divine union between counterparts as a physical relationship manifest in the material world, what it's going to look like, where are you going to live, you know, if there are kids involved. How are we taking care of them? What are the negotiations between the two counterparts um, and their, their uh, co-parents? You know, what are the work situations? Again, because there's this energy almost of a flip between poles, which can happen. Remember, we're, we're exploring extremes, right? The pendulum will swing all the way to the left, then all the way to the right before it anchors here in the center. There can be flips in some divine counterpart uh, connections where, you know, the one who was leading as divine feminine can become leading as divine masculine and vice versa. And when that happens, um, you know, there's this energy of really starting to understand where the other person has been at in their journey. And, and again, fostering greater compassion, greater understanding. Okay. So, um, that's the energy update for divine feminine. The other thing that I wanted to say for divine feminine energies at this time is that unfortunately with this Neptune square this may be a period of time where you really want to ease into finding your way to be okay with what's unknown. Just there's a question, there can be a question mark in your connection with self or a question mark in your connection with counterpart where things are just unclear at the moment. Like for whatever reason, Something about the spiritual connection, because these are both about spiritual connection, connection to unseen world, faith and truth, Neptune and Pisces, Juno and Sagittarius, something about it may be uncertain or unknown at this time. It's okay. It's meant to be a little bit foggy. And the reason we are learning, the reason for that is because we're learning how to be with okay, okay with the unknown. A lot of this energy for many divine feminines who have been operating in masculine energy, but anchored in a divine feminine physical form, this is teaching surrender. It's teaching letting go. It's teaching receptivity. It's teaching releasing control. <laughs> I know you guys are having fun. <laughs> this energy is forcing the teaching of relinquishing control so that you can, that energy of 
controlling the partner, controlling the destiny of the connection, controlling the outcome, binding their energy, trying to get them to do a certain thing, show up a certain way, wondering when, how, and trying to see the end point from here. Much of the obfuscation of Neptune at this time is giving you an opportunity to relinquish the divine masculine doing so you can settle into divine feminine beingness and allow things to unfold rather than trying to force it. And so this energy persists. Um, through the remainder of this year, I've talked about it in other videos, but this really, for a lot of divine feminines, it's, you know, those of you who identify as majority divine feminine, remember we talked about the more in union with self you become, the less one or the other you are. But for those of you who really identify yourselves as divine feminine at this stage of your journey, you will see that that part of you is being asked to give up her masculine ways and anchor into even more femininity. And that could also be some of what's coming out of the South Node is a reclamation of our foremother's way of doing femininity, some of that surrender and the stillness um, of holding the vision but releasing the doing and the outcome to getting there. Okay. The last energy here um, that we're talking about is this energy with Eris. I'm not loving this, <laughs> be honest. I love it and I don't love it. Um, I like that it's a trine. It's a much better energy than the Capricorn square energy to Eris we had last year. Eris is the energy of righteous riot, righteous rage. She's that energy of being unwilling to be excluded. She's the one who, when you know, excluded from a party, excluded from a conversation, disenfranchised, rather than peacefully protest, she will just blow the whole thing up. So <laughs> the heiress energy here coming in, uh, in trine, and trine is harmonious. We again talk about the aspects in Star School 101. The trining energy uh, from Juno to heiress, this conversation is really talking about it's, it's lighting a little bit of a fire under divine feminine booties. Um, and the fire has to do with recognizing where you don't see yourself reflected back to you in your connection, in your life. So where you are feeling like, wow, there's been a real erasure of me here, zero consideration of me, my needs, my desires, my wants, et cetera, et cetera, a real, you know, erasure of me. Um, because of some of the energy I describe in the general video, this is like straight up, you know, lipsticking somebody's front door, keying their car. Um, you know, that kind of almost violent insistence that you will not be ignored. So, uh, don't do that. I don't recommend that <laughs> or like pushing. It's a pushing kind of energy where, you know, maybe they have started to red light you or red light communication. And instead of slowing down, you start to speed up because you want to run this red light before the gates close and you're locked on the other side. That will get you blocked. <laughs> I have seen it thousands of times. If I've seen it once, I've seen it a dozen times. Don't run the red lights. If they're red lighting and signaling, hey, I can't communicate right now. Hey, I can't be present right now. Hey, you know, I've got other things going on that are needing my attention right now. They're starting to signal boundaries, and instead of honoring them, 
you're pushing past because you're in fear of, you know, being locked on the other side, that would be a misuse of this energy. What you, what we can do with this energy instead is really take the time to recognize, wow, where have I personally, because Eris is sitting in the sign of the self, been an active participant in my own exclusion? Chances are those behaviors began long before the connection started. And it's important, this particular full moon, and I go into this in the general video about how to work with this energy so that you're not placing responsibility, blame, uh, and accountability on the other person for your own wounding. So, and this is a, this particular full moon, because of the way this energy is playing out, there, energetically, there's an opportunity to hit walls with people because you're pushing too hard. Um, and then end up in a place where that you don't want to be. So where you're finding emotional reaction to their signaling of boundaries, the what there is to do is to look inside at what is this triggering for me? What is there for me to work on? What is there for me to heal as opposed to how can I get them to be different? And this energy has been building. It's going to be with us for a while this year um, as it communicates on the divine feminine side of the, of the spectrum. Um, this energy has been building. And it, like I said, it's going to continue to inform us about where we need to take responsibility for our own visibility in our lives and balance out the energy of grasping and reaching with the energy of sitting and receiving. Okay, so that's the divine feminine side of the energies. Let's talk about the divine masculine side of the energies. Um, and before we do, I also just wanna mention that if you've been wanting to get a twin reading with me, the calendar for that is open. Just head over to kmoonastro.com and you can go ahead and book that. Um, I know sometimes some of you have wanted to book a twin reading and you haven't seen anything on, available on the page. It's just because I have to balance out doing twin readings with personal readings energetically as a self-care method for myself. But there are twin readings available at this time. So if you want to book them, I recommend you to it now because there will come a point where I have to pull them and then fill more personal readings and then I can balance it back and forth that way. So um, let's talk about the divine masculine energy. This energy right here is sitting um, conjunct Mercury. So there's a lot of mental clarity and illumination in divine masculine energies at this time. Thankfully, divine masculine energy is pulling away from Saturn here. This has Jupiter Saturn conjunct has been a little like one foot on the gas, one foot on the brakes, flooding the engine. And then it's just like frustration occurs as a result. Uh, it's like part of you wants to go forward and expand. Another part of you is like, but I can only do it if it's in integrity. I can only do it if it's fully aligned. I can only do it if it is, you know, appropriate for, you know, who I am and where I'm at at this time. There's also this square to Lilith, which has been building uh, for a while there as well. And this uh, sextile to the south node, trying to the north node, the entire beginning part of this year from December into January, February, March, um, I would say even back as close as November of last year, this passageway has been about shoring up the, the, the bottom line in our divine masculine energetics. So the, the best way to understand this that I can give you is to give you a kind of like a quick overview of the 
energy of Saturn because Saturn is the outermost planet between the two. Saturn has a bit more pull and sway. I, again, I talk about this in star school, how the outer planets have a bit more influence over what, how the inner planets are expressing themselves. So if we go into Saturn's mythology, we have Saturn um, almost rescuing Gaia from a lover that she created. She wanted a lover. She was tired of, you know, populating her earth body by herself. She wanted a counterpart. She created the counterpart. They co-created babies together. And there came a day when the counterpart thought, Ooh, some of these babies are ugly. They should not be born. Counterpart decides to try and push those babies back inside of Gaia. And you don't need to be a rocket scientist to know what happened there. If you've ever given birth to a child, if somebody tried to push that baby back inside of you, when it's trying to come out, that person better watch out for their lives. <laughs> it's not going to go well for anybody. So Gaia cries out to her original children, the Titan. She said, Hey, I need some help. Saturn responds and says, okay, mom, what do you need? Gaia says, I want you to castrate him. And so this is how in traditional astrology, Saturn got the reputation as a bad guy, a separator, the castrator, the disciplinarian, but that's only if you use the male gaze. When you employ the female gaze, the feminine piece of the astrology here from Gaia's perspective, Gaia restored, or sorry, Saturn restored her ability to be able to give birth the way she was always meant to. And so with Saturn transiting with Jupiter, what that's what Saturn's been doing, restoring divine masculine's ability to hold his own divine feminine energy, restoring his ability to anchor in that energy at this time. And so for some, this has been a period of time where the divine masculine has really stepped back from the divine feminine because he's working to source divine feminine energy from within, not pair up with you, ignore his own, but bond only with yours. So for some people, it's played out in that way. For other people, you have seen divine masculine energy team up with from a learning perspective, a soulmate, because at this time, what that soulmate is going to do is force them to understand who they are in the world of divine feminine energy for themselves. But also because with Saturn in the mix, Saturn is saying, you can move forward, but only if it allows you to be whole, only if it allows you to be what you were created to be and do what you were created to do. And so where the divine feminine counterpart has been imbalanced herself in the connection, you'll see that at this period of time, the divine masculine counterpart has pulled away from the connection. So that because in the divine feminine's imbalance, it actually compromises the divine masculine's balance. And likewise, it's vice versa. It goes both ways. So if there, because Saturn can do that both way thing, I can separate you if this isn't working, but I can also deepen a commitment if this is fully aligned because Saturn operates in both ways. What's happening is a direct reflection of the growth that needs to occur on both sides of the connection. And this is something that's going to be important to remember this year as you move forward, because it, this, this is not about punishment. It's about recognizing where the stars are pointing out your own growth. Where in ourselves do we need to balance self? Where in ourselves do we need to heal self? Where in ourselves do, are we having our own divine masculine and feminine energy imbalanced? 
Where in ourselves do we need to grow one instead of the other? So again, if your own divine feminine energy has been way stronger than your divine masculine energy, and you've been leaning into reaching for divine masculine counterpart to make up the difference, this is a period of time where Saturn will say, oh, no, 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 I see that. And I know you can do better. You can be whole in self. Okay. Likewise, for those of you who are in union, you will start to see some challenges surface in the way these energetics are playing out at this time. And this is where you're going to start to find clarity about the work that has to get done for the union to stabilize going forward. So this could mean, you know, okay, I've got to dial back in this way so that my partner has space in that way, or I need to learn, you know, certain communication patterns in the arena of receptivity so that I can allow my counterpart space to be active, or I need to dial up in the world of activity, take initiative, be more accountable, drive certain things forward in the connection so that my counterpart can actually relax into being more receptive and divinely feminine. So whatever it is, what Saturn's trying to do is help us all balance it out. Balance it out in union with self, if that's the journey at this time, balance it out in union with a counterpart, okay? So um, that's, the, that's what I wanted to talk about. Those are the things, those are the things. Whatever's happening, the name of the game here is change. And I have been stressing this in all of the new and full moon videos leading up to this point and inside of the channeled messages for this year. The name of the game is change. So if you find internally the divine feminine and masculine energy flipping inside of you, that's actually a really good thing. You're just exploring the other side of the polarity as you come into union with self. I mentioned this in the last video that this is a period of time where you may find that because actually it's Saturn who's really jumping on top of divine masculine energy here because of the way Saturn's like, like literally riding divine masculine's ass at the moment, like you will not do anything that you are not actively ready for whole around capable of completing. You just won't be able to do it because of the way that energy is hanging out there at this time. For, for many who are experiencing the connection at this time as I'm divine feminine, he's divine masculine, or they are divine masculine. For those of you who are experiencing the connection with greater polarity at this time, you're going to find that whatever they are doing is an act of truth that is also serving you. It's meant to assist you in catalyzing your own growth if you're identifying as divine feminine. So in a lot of ways, the divine masculine counterpart is almost switching into a leadership role and leading the connection through their authenticity, through, you know, whether they're, you know, choosing you, choosing somebody else, choosing this job, choosing that job. They're trying to be authentic in a way that is really meant to be catalyzing the growth of the divine feminine counterpart. So um, do with that what that will. Um, hopefully you're able to find what's your message in there. Like I said, if you want to look at this in greater depth, you can book a reading. And the readings are over at kmoonastro.com. That is also where you will find access to Star School. If you've been wanting to do it, you can do it for 111.11 through March 19th, saving over 20%. You do get access to all of the pre recorded information and the PDF workbook. There are no live interaction components to this. So you can listen and learn at a pace and a rate that works for you on your schedule. 
Thank you so much, everyone, for subscribing. I never thought I'd be at the 15,000 subscriber mark. I thought I was just going to be, you know, just in my little corner of the universe with my 100 people doing my thing. But you guys have really showed me that, you know, what divine has spoken to me about the twin connection and the way it works are things that are also useful for you. And I really appreciate you. Uh, showing up for that because it's allowed me to confirm that, you know, I, I, I can, it's helped me to heal my own relationship with my intuition after some really painful breaks with it. So I really appreciate you guys being here. I love you all so much. Take great care and I'll see you in the next video.